your audio diary. This is Kate Hopkinson from what has to be one of the scariest places I've ever encountered. Right now, as I'm recording, Edgar and I are wandering through the power tower. <laughs> I know. Funny name, right? Power tower. <laughs> um, anyways, yes, the power tower. Edgar says this tower is the one that controls the grid to the main power source of Grand Iver Glen. If we can find the switch, we can turn the city's energy source back on and hopefully contact an airship to get us out of here. That's if we're lucky, however. As you can recall, there's a chance the aristocrats that damaged the city in the first place will hear our call for help and come crashing back in. If they realize that Edgar is alive, they'll want to finish the job. I might not know Edgar very well, but I wouldn't want harm to come to the lad. And I'm sort of stuck with him, so it wouldn't be wise to allow harm to come anyways. Regardless, I think that despite the circumstances, Edgar and I are going to become fast friends. Maybe. I look forward to camaraderie with the boy, even if he does rather get on my nerves at times. Don't get me wrong, he's attractive and all, but he has his, well, moments that I could do without. And don't get your hopes up for some scandal where the poor engineer falls in love with the rich idiot prince audio diary, because it won't happen. But what will happen? We will get out of here. I'm not going to give up for one second, although that doesn't stop me from shaking in my boots, quite frankly. This is terrifying. And to be honest, I don't know what's worse. Outside where countless automatons and, well, you know, bodies are. Or inside where there's literally nothing. It's so dark, I, I fear for our safety. You may be wondering where Edgar is in all of this. Well, good question. We've split up for the time being. Edgar's on the floor below me, seeing if he can get this thing operational. Well, I am on an adventure of sorts. As of right now, I'm trying to scope out the tower for any danger. Edgar doesn't have the guts for this job, but he does have the brains on how to get the power up and running, so this seemed to be the best option. But I'm not going to lie and say that I'm thrilled to be looking for anything that could potentially kill us. The power tower. <laughs> Hopkinson. Okay. The power tower <laughs> is located on the outer edge of Grand Iver Glen, just beyond the inner city and opposite of where I live. And it's uncomfortably close to the jungle. While we're up pretty high in the tower, about 50 floors, I'm still worried about wildlife. Break-ins. Oh dear. Audio diary. I've just had the most terrifying discovery. One of the upper windows is broken and it's most certainly not damaged from an automaton attack. I, um, know this because it looks as though whatever broke into the 50th floor of the building had a snack once it landed. Poor six-tailed dragon cow lizard. It didn't deserve for things to end this way. I will pray to the old gods for him. Ironic, since, you know, he became prey. <laughs> Get it? Because prey... Anyway, okay. I will stop with the puns. This is not the time. <laughs> pray. <laughs> oh, um... This looks rather... Ew. Okay, it's warm. Oh no. That means that this predator is still in the tower. An audio diary, since you do not have eyes, let me assure you that this creature is not only aerial, but it's huge. To have the power to take down a six-tailed dragon cow lizard? I can only begin to imagine what predator it could be. 
but the chances that it is still nearby or even inside the building. I must go on. Oh no. Audio diary. The creature is still very much in the building. And I think I know what it is. Audio diary. Yes. Hello. It's great that I got you working because, quite frankly, running and trying to work machinery is not the easiest of tasks. Luckily, I have splendid news of some sorts. You're probably asking yourself why I'm running in the first place. Well, good question. I'm running because if I fly, I risk not only angelics getting eaten by the largest bird of prey on Flora, but also my very life. Angelics cannot outfly this creature. Not by a long shot. Luckily, this bird's size has an advantage to it. I've discovered that the creature inside the building is none other than the revered carnivorous Tucanus. Carnivorous sounds dangerous. Tucanus does not. Regardless of its ridiculous name, this bird is terrifying. It's approximately seven feet in height with a wingspan of about big. It's very big. If you can imagine a seven foot tall bird, I'm sure you can imagine how large its wingspan is. I shouldn't have to... <sighs> I shouldn't have to go over this with you, Audio Diary. Currently, our welcoming friend is chasing me through the various halls. I'm trying to make it back to Edgar, but it's a little difficult to do, so... The carnivorous Tucanus is known for its incredible speed in air, however... Its ability to run on foot is terrible, and terrible for the carnivorous toucanus is about 50 miles per hour. Luckily, the hole's whip and maze-like structures have allowed me to have the advantage. Unluckily, I can't seem to get away for even a second to get into the door Edgar's behind. If I open it and rush in, I won't be able to close it in time to block the carnivorous toucanus. And then Edgar and I would be the bird's next meal. <sighs> Just as mangled as that dragon cow visit. Ew. <sighs> My hopes are that I can cut it off at the next staircase whilst going down. If I can just run fast enough, the bird may increase its speed as well, causing it to run into the upper hall rather than the lower exit. If it doesn't make sense to you, it doesn't have to. You're an audio diary. The staircase is coming up just around the corner, and if I could just... <laughs> Hello? Oh, thank the old gods, you still work. I was worried for a second that perhaps all this recording had been for naught. But luckily you got away with minor injuries. Just a few dents is all. I'll be able to fix that once we've gotten into a better situation. Which may be soon. I was terrified for a moment there. As I was rushing down the stairs, I tripped and fell. I was lucky to get away with only a few bruises. However, the carnivorous toucanus came right at me. My plan failed, and for a brief moment, I saw my entire life flash before my eyes. Petrified at the foot of the stairs, I thought it was all over when Edgar arrived and shot the bloody thing right between the eyes. He's handsome and all, but so far, he's proven to be a bit of a softy. I suppose I should never simply assume things about a person just from the previous experiences. I don't think I could ever thank Edgar enough for all of his help. He saved my life. Hey, wait, no, that makes us even. I saved his sorry us in the very beginning of this terrifying adventure. So serves him right. Don't give me that face, Edgar. I'm recording this for scientific purposes. Anywho's, right now we're about to turn the power on. Edgar got it working, he thinks. And as scary as a large carnivorous bird chasing me down a power tower was, I think I'm more nervous now. If the power turns on and we end up attracting the attention of the aristocrats, well then, all of this was for... No, I'm not going to say that. We must stay positive. Even if the aristocrats did come here, 
Edgar and I would have enough time to get out of the city and into the jungles of Flora, where it is extremely unsafe and we don't know when we'll run into any nomads. But luckily, one of us spent her entire childhood out in the jungles. Granted, that was with the protection of countless devices, ray guns, and extensive training every morning, which I've neglected since. But the bottom line, we'll be fine. We have been fine. I've locked this two-way radio on for the first airship located nearby. When the power turns on, we should be able to use it. Hopefully. We'll catch someone. Okay, Edgar? Flip the switch, and we'll see if we can find ourselves an airship. Hello? Can you hear us? Hello? I can hear you just fine. Oh, oh, thank the old gods. Are you by chance the captain of an airship? Well, your signal is locked on a landing platform, so yes. Who else would you be talking to? Listen, this is Paige Hopkinson from the planet Flora. A terrible disaster has rendered Grand Ivor Glen uninhabitable. Everyone is dead, save for the uncharted nomads living in the jungles. I was able to survive, somehow. Please, I need your help. I need a flight out of here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow down, Ma. What happened down there? Automatons were reprogrammed. All the individuals in the city were killed. That's all I know. And how do I know you aren't the one who called you if you're the only survivor? Uh, you'll just have to trust me? Okay, that's good enough for me. We're just outside Flora's orbit. We should be able to land within the hour. Be prepared. This is Captain Alex Strandwood speaking. I fly the Royal Grace. She'll be a grander sight than your city. Her poor choice of words. <laughs> it's fine. I do that often. Captain Strandwood, I cannot thank you enough. Oh, please, don't mention it. We'll be there shortly enough. Thank you. Audio diary, did you pick that up? Where? We're going to leave Grand Ivor Glen. I would have never imagined that it would have been like this, but I can't imagine anything right now. I must go. Rix and our items are still back at Edgar's, and if they're to be here in the hour, we must make haste. I will report once we're on the ship. For now, this has been Paige Hopkinson, over and out. This episode of Bosch and Brave was brought to you by Blackmore Productions and written and produced by Ashley Glenn. Paige Hopkinson was voiced by Clover Grayson. Alex Strandwood was voiced by Adam Barba. Like what we do here? Follow us on Facebook, Tumblr, YouTube, SoundCloud, and iTunes. Or if you want to see what Rix is up to, follow Bosch and Brave on its own personal Tumblr. Want to tell us which old god you worship? Send us a message at blackmoreproductions at gmail.com. Also, we have a website. Go to blackmoreproductions.com to get the latest updates on your favorite podcasts. Well, until then, take flight to the skies, fellow angelics pilots. <laughs>